Hi and welcome to a new video of the Matryoshka system. My name is Amethyst. In this video, I want to talk about how you can talk over with professionals that you have the ID. I made a previous video um, where I explained if you should talk with professionals or your family and friends about the ID whom you should and shouldn't tell about that you have the ID. And uh, I suggested that you do tell your uh, therapist and your doctor, your psychiatrist and anyone else that can prescribe medication and does prescribe medication to you. Um, that they, they should know that you have the ID if you are self-aware of it, um, whether you have an official diagnosis yet or not. So in this video, I want to talk about how you can come out of the closet as the ID to a professional and what a good response would be for a professional when you uh, share with them that you have the ID um, and what you could possibly expect. I don't know your therapist though, so I don't know how they will respond. Um, I just know what is uh, an okay response and an not okay response. So that's what I'm going to share. So first of all, if you've been with your therapist for a long time, it's really like coming out of the closet and like you've been hiding something from them for a long time and now you're going to come clean with them and explain that you have DID. Um, I would um, try to reference to previous conversations you've had and say, you remember when I told you about XYZ? Um, that was actually not my experience, but the experience of this altar. Um, and I wanted to talk about that in therapy. Um, I would share that you want to be open now with your therapist about your disorder because you feel that you need more specific help or need with your DID and that you hope that your therapist can provide that for you. If it's a new therapist, like I said in the previous video, be upfront uh, right from the start, like even before you go to a first conversation, ask them if they uh, are treating people with the ID, if they have experience with treating people with the ID. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an indicator, but you know, uh, if someone has treated people with the ID, you might have a bigger chance of a success rate, I guess, in my, opinion just because they've done it before they might know better what to do uh, what to expect so uh, if you if you want to share more than just I have the ID or I think I have the ID you could share something about your system um, for some people that information is really personal though and to share that can be quite difficult so instead of saying Bella is my little one Michael is my protector and uh, uh, Sandra is my persecutor you could say I have three littles, uh, two protectors and a, a mom altar, for example, if that's the case. Um, you could share about your inner world to explain more what that looks like or how you experience that or uh, if you can or cannot communicate and how you communicate with other parts. I think that's good to share with your therapist um, in, in a first few conversations that you have about the subject because if will probably be more than one conversation you're going to have about this. Um, how your therapist should respond or any professional is accepting and open. Um, if you do not have an official diagnosis, they might uh, ask questions to um, see if you meet the criteria for the DSM-5, uh, which is... So you have uh, two or more recurring uh, different personalities that um, present themselves, uh, you have amnesia uh, or memory gaps or trouble recalling uh, important events of your life. So either you don't remember your childhood or you don't remember certain uh, uh, forms of abuse that happened or you don't remember getting married or uh, anything like that. Um, the, the person must be distressed by the disorder or have trouble functioning or may uh, more major life areas because of the disorder. Just having alters is not uh, meeting all the criteria for the ID. Like having the ID is a lot more than just having alters. So it must trouble you, yes? If it doesn't trouble you, it's not a disorder, basically. And the disturbance is not part of a normal cultural or religious practice. It, uh, 
It also states like an example of this in children where an imaginary friend is not necessarily indicative of a mental illness. And the last thing that the DSM-5 says is the symptoms are not due to the direct physiological effect of a substance such as uh, drugs or alcohol. So um, they might ask you certain questions to see, uh, you know, how you experience this association, what that means for you, um, and if you meet those five criteria of the DSM-5 to classify as DID. Um, if they tell you the idea does not exist or um, it's not possible for you to have the ID or um, that your trauma was not severe enough to have created the ID um, or maybe it's more of a bipolar thing or something like that um, then this therapist is not going to be able to help you with the ID, basically. Um, and I don't recommend working with them if you want to work on your DID. Like, if you want to work on different things, then, you know, go ahead. But if you want to work on your DID and they are not accepting or open about it, um, they are not willing to have a conversation with you, then, you know, how are they going to be able to help you? Uh, if you want to open up to your therapist about this, you could uh, say to them that you have read the DSM-5 and that you uh, uh, meet all the criteria for it. Um, that's all the tips I have for you. So I hope this was helpful and that you learned something new today. Um, or maybe that I gave you the little push of courage to come out to your therapist and explain that you, uh, that you have DID. So thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.